Welcome back to Petology. I'm Blair Miles Stravich, and we're joined by Kyle Jans from the Winnipeg Humane Society, and we have a lovely volunteer, Marlene, to help us hold some of these little guys. Tell us who these are. This here is Melly, and she's the mother, and then here on my right we have Stu, as well as sister Tipsy here, and they're about 10 weeks old. They uh, arrived as strays all together at the Humane Society, so they spent some time in foster care, and they're just awaiting some spay and neuters, and then they're going to be on the adoption floor and adopted quite soon, I imagine. Oh, look at this face. Look at this face. <laughs> so, Kyle, tell us exactly what are what all, all the things, which of course are a lot. What are some of the biggest things the Humane Society does? Well, I mean, when people think of the Winnipeg Humane Society, I think a lot of people just think of a place where you can adopt an animal, but it's so much more than that. Uh, we have some, some behavior programs that are, we offer to the community, so whether that be someone who's taking a class and learning how to better interact and learn with their dog, as well as if they're just having any issues that they might have around the house with maybe their pet's behavior, we have a Yelp line which is going to be available for people to call in, they can ask their questions, they can figure out how exactly to solve maybe some of the pet issues, whether it's a cat that's not using a litter box or a dog that's maybe digging up the backyard too much. Yeah. So th there are a lot of things like that where we're here not only to uh, help you find your best friend, but just make sure that that relationship with your best friend is the best that it can possibly be. Awesome. So, of course, something you're hinting on there is education. You know, that's just a very simple thing that you guys are trying to get across. What are some of the programs that you guys offer? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So, I mean, we, when it comes to education, there's teaching the dogs, of course, through through our training. Uh, we also offer training for humans. So, we offer Ooh. things like uh, dogs and storks classes, which are for parents who are expecting and how they can best introduce a new baby into their into their uh, uh, life with a dog at home. There's uh, pet first aid classes so that you know what to do in case you were ever uh, come across an unfortunate situation where you need to get to your uh, help your pet in the best situation like that as well as a what is my dog saying class so that class um, will help people gain a better understanding of kind of what their dog is saying through their body language and posture and that type of thing and we even go above and beyond and help teach tomorrow's humane leaders today so we offer oh, wow. some school some curriculum based school programs uh, for teachers who are interested in either having having uh, someone from the Humane Society come down to their classroom with some animals and teach them about animal welfare, or they're also welcome to come to the shelter and be able to learn about how the shelter operates and all that type of wonderful stuff as well. Now, uh, now let's talk about your volunteers, which I know they play a big part as I've visited many times. Uh, what are some of the great things that volunteers can do? Oh man, it, it's endless really. I mean, there's something there There's something there for everyone. So if, if someone uh, particularly likes cats, they can spend time cuddling some cats just like these ones here. <laughs> we have dog walk. So those are two of the most popular ones or a lot of the ones that people think of when they think of volunteering. But there's also a lot of volunteers that we have that help us in the clinic and animal care in the back. Even in our, in our accounting and in our office, they help with paperwork and filing donations. So literally there's a little bit of something for everyone there. Now, a lot of times we just see dogs and cats, but talk about some other animals you have there. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So we also have a little critter area. So we have a lot of <laughs> guinea pigs and rabbits that do come through our doors and that we find homes for. Uh, gerbils and hamsters we've had. We've had a chinchilla once, which was a new one for me, as well as a, a, a variety of birds from doves and budgies and cockatiels. Uh, th there was one time actually kind of recently we, we had a pig come in. Now, we don't, oh. we don't adopt the pig out on the adoption floor, but the pig did did find a new home that was outside of the city limits and, and he's going to be having a wonderful life out there as well. So it's amazing, you know, the variety of animals that come in, but it's also a, a really nice feeling as well knowing that there are people in the community who, who know that they can come to us to, well, to give those animals. That, that's exactly there's it. There's trust and, I mean, and that's important. It's, it's trust and it goes back to 1894, which is when we first really originated. It started out as a, as a society for, for women, for children, and for animals, and then it eventually uh, became what it is today. It's been through a variety of places, out on Logan Avenue, out on Kent, and then eventually it just became, the operation became so big that we needed to uh, go into the building that we are right now, which we opened nice. up at uh, 2007. Awesome. Now, 
you know, I got distracted because of all the cuteness, obviously. <laughs> and I'm not even a cat person, but how could you not love this? Let's talk about, you know, there is uh, a little bit of history behind black cats. And yes. Let's talk about that. That's exactly it. That's why we figured it'd be good to bring these guys <laughs> in uh, at this point in the time of the year, because black cats seem to always be associated with Halloween. And in North America, there's a strange stigma around black cats where they just don't, people seem to see them as bad luck. But it's actually interesting when you look back in times like the Egyptian times, all cats, including black ones, were oh, wow. worshipped. Uh, they're seen as good luck charms in Scotland, Britain, and Japan even. So it really depends on where you are is what the, what the black cat means. So for these guys, we also we find that black cats tend to be some of the last ones to be adopted from the shelter. And so that's oh. always been uh, kind of a challenge for us because we want to be able to find these ones' homes just as much as we want to find any other cat's homes. Of course. So I, I, I think maybe... I, it when people are looking for their cats, they, they might not think of like associate this cat, for example, with witchcraft or wizardry or witches or anything like that. But we just want to be able to showcase that all of them have wonderful personalities. And while they might not have necessarily the colors and the stripes that other cats have, they, they're just as loving as. Now, I think we already lost Marlene. Marlene is in love. <laughs> I think that's what's happening. We can't hear her because she has no microphone because we just needed her to hold the cat, but she's so adorable and so is the cat. So we oh, thank you so much for being here. Um, one welcome. of the things we want to talk about too is uh, what would you recommend to somebody who's maybe wanting to get uh, an animal in general? Absolutely. Well, the first thing I'd make sure that uh, they, they think about it and make sure that it's uh, something that you put a lot of thought into because an animal can be anywhere from a 10 to 20 year commitment, which is a big commitment that you have to make. So whether you want a dog, you kind of have to think of, well, what size of dog would I want? Do I have children? How is it going to relate with my family? Can I afford <laughs> the medical expenses that are going to come, both the routine veterinary checks as well as if something were to happen if for, where they need an emergency vet, vet, medical attention or something like that. So there's the cost factor involved. But then, I mean, once you've gone through those, come down to the Winnipeg Humane Society and, and just come take a look at the shelter and see what's around. We always have a, we have a great display with the cat condos where you can see the cats hanging out and, and relaxing and kind of live in how they would if they were in a home. And just come see if there's something that catches your eye. You know, when I talk to a lot of people, they always say that the animal kind of picked them in the end. And so I can <laughs> nice. definitely attest to that as well. And that's one of the big things, all of this, no matter where you're going to go for whatever kind of new, you know, maybe buddy you're looking for, is to get educated. And that's mm -hmm. a big thing that we want to get across to everyone. And if you're looking to volunteer, maybe not necessarily at the Winnipeg Humane Society or anywhere with any of the rest because you can always check everything online, but also if you want to check out how you can be like Marlene here you, and you want to take part in volunteering on some of the great shows we have here on Shaw TV, if you want to be a part of Palology or if you want to send us photos, you can send an email to createtv at shaw.ca. Now we also have this fish on the table. We have a little <laughs> bit of contest going on. Notice how we're keeping the, the cats away from the fish. It's a good idea. And I keep saying fish because the fish has no name. So right now if you follow us on Shaw TV, there's a reason, Kyle. <laughs> if you follow us on Twitter at Shaw TV Winnipeg and you hashtag Petology and you come up with a name, if your name gets chosen, uh, you'll be able to feature your pet here on Pel Petology in an upcoming episode. There's lots more to come on Petology. We're going to talk to our expert panel. So we'll see you guys in just a little bit.